Precision Boost Overdrive. If you've got a second gen Ryzen or Threadripper, you've already got it. It's the name given to a bit of hardware inside those AMD CPUs, like these, that uh, sort of assist you with giving a performance boost if you get the power budget and you've got the thermal budget. It is a form of overclocking, but it's different than traditional overclocking. I mean, it used to be that you just threw the bus speed from 66 megahertz to 100 megahertz and called it a day. And the Ryzen 6 and 8 core, 2600X and 2700X, these machines are gonna be insanely popular CPUs this holiday season because, well, uh, that's the time a lot of upgrades happen, you know, around the holidays. And because these CPUs are great, and shockingly good prices, and because other CPUs are not really available. <laughs> but what if you want a little bit more horsepower? Well, you can enable PBO, Precision Boost Overdrive. The coolers that come with these CPUs from AMD will give you a little bit of headroom for overclocking in that regard. So especially the cooler that comes with the 2700X. I mean, AMD was even offering like Wraith Max bundles where you could get the 2600X with an upgraded cooler over what it normally comes with. I mean, it has an extra speed switch, at least the one that comes with the Ryzen 7 that makes it louder, but that will allow the fan to really ramp up the RPMs that helps with the airflow over the heatsink, and that really does help you with the PBO quite a bit. Now, you'll hit those higher four gigahertz clocks a lot more often, but the question is, what does it really do for performance. And what do you do if you want more? I mean, you know, overclocking is not about overclocking in the expected way. It's about overclocking in the unexpected ways. First, uh, you know, PBO is probably the future of overclocking, if you think about it. It pretty much has to be because we're hitting a wall with what the silicon really do by itself. And if you have a bunch of cores, you know, six or eight or 16 or 32 cores, even a very slight increase in power demands for, for the one of those cores times eight cores running at that speed means that there's not really enough power budget to feed the CPUs. And that power goes to heat. So then you've got a heat budget as well. So you can run, you know, well, I mean, it, more and more it turns into a situation where the design of the CPU will allow some CPU cores to really ramp high and they use up all the power budget or you can run all of the cores at a lower speed and that fits within sort of a power and thermal envelope and that's why I say it has to be the future because there's not really any getting around that unless you can spread the the heat out a lot more than just a concentrated you know 14 or 10 nanometer or 7 nanometer area and you know deal with the uh, the resulting heat from the, re the reduction I mean that's one of the, the reasons for process reduction is that seven nanometer transistors use less power, which produce less heat. So I wanted to see what would happen with PBO in a better scenario or the best possible scenario. Does it really help it? So I've got the Scythe Fuma cooler. So we're gonna add an aftermarket cooler and see if that makes sense. This cooler is set up with six heat pipes, fairly large heat pipes at that. I mean, considering this, the cooling surface area of the, uh, of the cold plate, it's, uh, it is, not direct contact. There is a little bit of a uh, of a cold plate here, but honestly, it's still very effective, especially for Ryzen cooling. I mean, you know, stock speeds that Ryzen seven's only 105 watts, and easily this is a 200 watt cooler. Probably more like 230 watts or so, if I were to guesstimate based on our testing. Now it's worth mentioning that the wire clipping method of mounting the fans to the heatsink is actually pretty good. Uh, this is not the first time we've seen this sort of mounting mechanism. I mean, you know, if you wanna go all the way back to this cooler from like the dawn of time, same mounting mechanism. It's, it's pretty genius really, because in this case, you know, you've got the dual tower cooler and this is, this motherboard, this particular motherboard is a Crosshair Hero 7. And so there's some accoutrement covering the, uh, you know, rear IO shield. And then our RAM is pretty close to the CPU socket in order to be able to overclock and, and that sort of thing. And so even with this dual tower cooler, I don't really give up anything. I do have to mount the fan a little higher. Like I, I can't slide it all the way down because the rear IO cover is in the way. And I don't want to mount a fan in the front because then I would block the RAM. But all four RAM slots, I mean the, the clearance is pretty tight, but all four RAM slots in here are uh, clear. There's zero millimeters of clearance, as in I could maybe get a sheet of paper between the heat sink and the first dim, but it's there. And so it works and it works well. And also you can see, I mean, this is the, uh, the fractal meshify C and you can see that, uh, uh, you can see that uh, there's quite a bit of room between the top of the tower and the outside of the case. 
And finally, if your motherboard does not have two fan headers, it does come with a fan splitter, which is a nice touch. So we've tried all-in-ones as well on the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7, but you know, there's something to be said for the quiet simplicity of a tower cooler, or a dual tower cooler in this case, with this cooler. Uh, the one that we're going to be taking a look at in this box. So, spoiler alert, the results are not what I expected. Now, I did a lot of game testing for this one, and testing it pure stock with G-Skill Flare X 3200MHz memory, and, you know, pure stock with PBO, meaning that we're using the stock coolers, but we enable PBO, and I did turn up the, the switch on the Ryzen 7 2700, so it was quite a bit louder. And then, replacing the stock cooler on both the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7, with the dual tower cooler. So first, the GTA 5. The GTA 5 actually is a terrible game for benchmarking. It's got a lot of gotchas, but the engine, really the, the engine starts to break if you do past 140 FPS, and these rigs can easily do that at you know 1080p with the, the appropriate graphics card. Uh, I've used it a long time, and so I can feel very minor differences in systems. It performs very consistently for me. So I was curious to see what does it do? How does the game feel with PBO really cranked up? Next up, Call of Duty Black Ops, or COD Blops. It's from Activision, it's a relatively new game. You know, it's the Fortnite for grown-ups. I don't know, it's the Fort Fortnite for COD fans. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not a good COD Blops player. Uh, finally, I tested a bunch of other games, like Civ 6, Ghost Recon, and even Doom. I tested both the 2600X and the 2700X. And a lot of the testing really, honestly, is very subjective. I mean, Doom is pretty much gonna run at 200 FPS uh, no matter what. But overall, the summary is that what I found was just enabling PBO, even with the stock coolers, doesn't really help the overall frame rate. It doesn't really increase the frame rate. It's not gonna move GTA 5 from 140 to 150 FPS. Uh, maybe a little, but that's really margin of error. I think this is really something that we probably already knew from our other content that we've had on the channel, uh, but it was worth repeating here. It was worth, you know, sort of retesting and see if, see if stuff has changed. But, you know, even with the best CPU in the world, PBO, I don't, I don't think that you should expect it to let you hit 4.3 gigahertz on all eight cores, rock solid 24 seven, because that's just not really gonna happen. Uh, it's also not really going to increase your frame rate. I mean, it's, it's not realistic to expect that. And it's just because of the way that the PBO works. Uh, maybe if you could undervolt it slightly, you could hit 4.3 on all cores. A few people on our forum have been able to do that, but by and large, uh, no. But PBO does have a big effect, otherwise we wouldn't be doing a video. I would have just made a little note in the thing, it's like, nope, video doesn't matter. And check this out. Especially when compared to an Intel 8700K, or better, or you know, you know, A700K or better from the Intel. Enabling PBO seemed to help with the one percent lows, especially when the background tasks that the system uh, might have been running were maybe eating into resources on the game. Because like GTA 5 is doing all kinds of crazy stuff in the background. Windows 10, there is enough of a bump that I would recommend everybody enable PBO, no matter what kind of cooler that you have. That is. PBO should not make your system any more unstable or wear out your CPU faster or anything like that. Just enable it. Performance gains. Especially if you've got you know, memory with a decent XMP profile. So the biggest benefit from using an aftermarket cooler is not really the performance. Uh, I mean, there, there was maybe a performance bump, but it's you know noise. But it really does help with PBO, and I'm surprised at how much it does help with PBO. Uh, you know, it wasn't a huge difference in gaming overall but having a system that hitches less, that's maybe worth it. But here's the unexpected bit. The one place where the Scythe Cooler did make a larger difference was in rendering. And so render time decreased by about two to three percent just enabling PBO, and up to about five percent with PBO plus the Fuma Cooler. So PBO plus the better cooler rendering. I mean, I guess that, that makes sense because you're able to run all the cores at a higher clock more consistently, which is something that rent, rendering would benefit from. Whereas with, with you know, one, two, three, or four cores for gaming, you're hitting that 4.25, 4.35 gigahertz ceiling that you have you know, between the Ryzen 5 2600X and the, the, 27, the Ryzen 7 2600X. And so I guess that makes sense in, in retrospect. I just, I should have thought about it a little bit more. And so then you see the data and it's like, oh yeah, okay, well that, that makes sense. 
the 2700X also has the beefier cooler, and so I think that's why we see less of a difference there, because, I mean, games like GTA V, not really using a lot of cores, and so the beefy 2700X cooler basically does a fine job keeping it cool. But the somewhat weaker cooler on the 2600X is more of a contrast to the cooling capabilities, because there are less cores, less cores to generate less heat, AMD bundles a worse um, a cooler by default, unless you get the Wraith Max bundle, which was a thing around around the Thanksgiving holiday, so maybe that's still available, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but if not, this is a pretty affordable aftermarket cooler, and even though PBO doesn't really affect frame rate that much, it is nice not to have the system dipping as low and the 1% lows or background processes having less of an effect on the overall system. It's also worth noting that the Fuma was much, much quieter than the 2700X cooler on that high setting. Insanely way quieter. I mean, it's a dual fan, dual tower cooler. So it actually does a very good job at cooling. Another exciting thing about this cooler is that it fits in a 4U rack mount case. So if you were thinking about building a VMware ESXi system, this cooler is gonna make an appearance in our VMware, you know, running ESXi on Ryzen and Threadripper cooler or uh, video, and this, if you're wanting to build a Ryzen system for VMware, virtual machine, like your home lab, like not commercially, just to experiment with, this cooler will fit in a 4U case. So it's not an obscenely huge tower. So that's very, very appreciated. So if you find a stock cooler, it doesn't open up PBO the way that you want it. Maybe this makes sense. <laughs> it's not a Fuma, <laughs> the stock cooler, I mean, because uh, nobody got the reference. It's fine. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. You can find me in the Level 1 forums if you decide to pick up one of these. Take pictures and show off your system. Let us know what your experiences were. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.